Hello, baby. Hello. Good morning, church. Hi, Nina. Hello. Can I have the keys up, please? Hello, oh, dog. Music. Oh, hello. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so we are now in the time where we come around the word. And before I begin, I would just like to give honor where honor is due. <clears throat> First and foremost, to Pastor Rene and Tita Nancy. <laughs> Thank you for giving us and me this opportunity to speak on this platform and for allowing us as sort to flourish in our gifts within the church. Maraming salamat po. And lastly, to my parents, even though my dad's not here, he's at work, he got overtime. Praise the Lord. <laughs> um, I love you both very much. And I wouldn't be who I am today without the two of you. <clears throat> so now, before we go into the word, I would just like to pray. Uh, Father God, Lord, we just thank you so much for today. And we um, thank you for this opportunity to come around your word again. And Lord, we ask that you speak to every person and every heart that is uh, listening to my voice at the moment, Lord. We ask that you move. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, to just be within our midst. <clears throat> and Lord, we, I just ask you personally, Lord, that it would be you that would be speaking this message, Lord. I ask that you use me as your vessel and as your mouthpiece, and that you would speak exactly what the congregation needs to hear, Lord. And yes, Lord, we ask that the moment we leave this place, that we won't leave the same again. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for your new revelations that will come through this word. And in Jesus' name, the church says, Amen. Amen. So, can I please have, <laughs> can I please have Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23 on the screen as well. Okay. In the New King James Version, it says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. So today I want to share around the fruit of the Spirit, but in particularly the Holy Spirit's fruit of peace through my life's testimony so far. So, if you do not know me, my name is Nina. And when I was a baby, I was born with a defective heart. I had what was called atrial septal defect, which is a hole in my heart. And I have pictures, so can I get the first picture up? And I also drew it as well. You told. You told it. So, if you can see... Oh, okay. Thank you, Ate. So on the, uh, to understand what ASD is, which is the short version of it, we need to understand what exactly a normal heart is and what it does. So a normal heart is a muscle and it's in charge of pumping blood throughout your heart. And the thing about how blood flows, it only flows in one direction. It can't flow backwards, it can't flow sideways. <clears throat> so it starts, it starts first from your body then it goes inside the heart. And the heart is divided into four chambers. At the top, it is the atriums. And at the bottom, yeah, it's there too. And at the bottom, it's the ventricles. So the blood flows from the body to the right atrium, then down to the right ventricle. Then it goes up to the lungs. Then from the lungs, it comes back to the heart, to the left atrium. Then it goes down to the left ventricle, then it goes all the way to the body. So, as you know, blood flows in that very specific direction. But what the hole does is it allows blood to kind of not flow in that direction. So in the case for me, atrial septal defect, <clears throat> the chambers of the heart is divided by this tissue and it's called the septum. 
So that's why it's called septal. And the heart, it was found at the top. That's why it's called atrial. So atrial septal defect, it's a heart between the septum or the right and left atrium. So it allowed... in early 2012 when I was complaining of chest pains and I was only 11 years old then. My GP sent me to do a lot of tests and when I went for an ultrasound with my cardiologist, that was when we found out about the hole. I can still remember his words when he told us this. He said, I have good news and bad news. Which one would you like to hear first? I don't really remember which one we asked for, but I think my mom said we would like to hear the bad news first. So then he said, the bad news is that she has a hole in her heart. I remember that this was the moment when my worry and fear began. The next moments were a little bit of a blur when he started explaining what exactly it was I had. Then he said, the good news is that Nina's chest pains are not related to her heart at all. My cardiologist assumed that it may have been muscle pains that have caused the chest pains, but he wasn't sure. To this day, we are still not sure what exactly caused the chest pain, but thank God I don't have them anymore. <clears throat> Many things happened after, but the conclusion was that I needed major open heart surgery because the hole was quite enlarged, and also my heart. <clears throat> because of the defect and the irreg irregularities in the blood flow of my heart, my heart was forced to work harder. The heart itself is just a muscle, and as you know, when you work out a muscle, especially, oh, where is it? especially really intensely, the muscle will grow, and that is exactly what happened. The heart was enlarged, but as a result, the hole was enlarged as well. Usually, ASD closures can be done easily by cardiac catheterization. And I have a second picture that shows what that is. Okay, so this is the ASD heart again, and you can see the blood flowing there. What catheterization is, it allows a catheter to flow through this vein inside the heart and there's this device here that has a patch attached that allows the the wall of the septum to come together so that's what that was <clears throat> but the procedure would take no longer than three hours and the patient could go home that day or the following day so it's a very easy procedure but because of how enlarged the hole was i could not have that i needed to have the more risky open heart surgery. <clears throat> yeah. My cardiologist also told us that because they had found, yeah, sorry. My cardiologist also told us that because they had found the hole really late, this is because ASD is usually discovered in babies, there would be higher risks to my open heart surgery. So when he told us that, really anything can happen with the surgery. That skyrocketed my fear and anxiety. My surgery was pushed back many times and, the, and finally the day came, July 23, 2012. Prior to this, one of my favorite songs, Our God by Chris Tomlin, was played on repeat in the car, at home, and in my head. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And my mom introduced me to what is now my favorite verse. 
John 14, 27. And it says this, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, and neither let it be afraid. I meditated on these, but despite all of that, my worries and my fears wouldn't go away, no matter how much I tried. After all, I was only just 11 years old, and only in year 5 of primary school. I felt the most fearful the night before the surgery, and on the morning of the surgery, as we were driving towards Westmead Children's Hospital. But the moment when I stepped in the into the hospital, where I thought all my fears would be at its highest, I felt the most calm and peaceful. I couldn't understand it, and in all honesty, it is weird. It was very weird. Can I have Philippians chapter uh, 4 verses 6 to 7 on the screen, please? Oh, so quick. It says this, <clears throat> Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Right there in verse 7, that's how you know that it was God and it could only be God, because it aligned with His Word. The Holy Spirit produced His fruit of peace in me at that moment, and it was the type of peace that I couldn't explain. So what happened to my surgery? The procedure itself, <laughs> was very successful. It was only a four hour open heart surgery. I say only because the surgeons told us that this type of open heart surgery usually takes many hours. But everything went so well in the surgery, they finished faster. And when the doctor met my parents in the ICU, he told them that all my vitals were normal and that everything looked good. Now, after the surgery, they taught us that recovery in the hospital would take about two weeks, and then I would be able to go home. But I was only in the hospital for five days before the nurses and doctors let me go home. Again, it can only be God, and I was amazed and awestruck. But God didn't stop there with my testimony. There is more, and it surrounds how I was born. And according to my mom, because she was the one that was pregnant, <laughs> when she was pregnant with twins, myself and Chloe, she's on the piano, no one knew she was having twins. Because every time her ob used her stethoscope to listen to the baby's heartbeat, she could only hear one heartbeat. The reason now, because of my defect, it made my heart really weak. Now, even though you might ask yourself, what about the ultrasounds? In fact, I have a picture, not of the actual ultrasound, but I drew it. <laughs> Very good, baby. <laughs> so, in the first picture, this is what we assumed that we saw. We saw one baby in the ultrasound. But this next picture is what we assumed was happening in my mom's stomach. So, we have the one baby. And we assumed that the second baby, or me, was behind the first. And we assumed this because when me and Chloe were born, she was born 6.5 pounds and I was born 5.5 pounds. So that made me smaller. So we assumed that I was hiding behind Amen. the baby. Amen. But we're not sure. <laughs> so, well, aside from the fact that my mom's whole pregnancy was healthy, Ultrasounds in the Philippines, where I was born, were expensive, and my parents could only afford to do one. My mom had the one ultrasound two weeks before the due delivery date, so that her ob guy would know the position of the baby. This way, she would know whether or not a normal labor is safe, or whether another labor was needed. The one ultrasound only showed one baby, as I shown not two, ready to be delivered in the head down position. So then, the day came, August 8, 2000, 
Coincidentally, also my auntie Nicole's birthday. Her seventh birthday. When my mom went into labor. Now after the first baby, Chloe, was delivered, my mom's stomach didn't settle, but it readied itself to deliver another baby. This was, this was the only time where they all found out she was having twins, after the first one had come already. <laughs> According to my mom, her OB guide's words were still loud and clear to, till this moment. Her OB guide said to her, Rosanna, prepare to deliver another baby. You are having twins. <laughs> and there I came to be. Two healthy, full-size twin babies were born into the world via normal delivery. And I think that's a miracle itself because don't take my word for it, but I think when you have twins, they're not supposed to be full size. They're meant to be half and half. Amen. That's so true. If, let's say you have a baby that's 6.5 pounds or 6 pounds. Both the babies need to be 3 pounds and 3 pounds. Amen. Because it would be uh, risky or very dangerous for the mother to have Amen. Yeah, more yeah. than a full size, you know, Amen. in her stomach. <laughs> So yes, by normal delivery, and she's fine, I mean, Chloe are fine, well, but then again. <laughs> but the next problem came when the nurse asked my mom and dad what the names of the baby were. Yeah. My parents, obviously, had only prepared for one baby's name, and it would be Chloe Deborah. So when it came to name me, the name had to be impromptu, on the spot. My mom's older sister, her ate, and my tita was also in the room. She suggested the name Nina, since her words, it is a popular name in Australia. And to this day, I am still the only Nina that I've ever met. <laughs> My mom agreed, but Chloe had two names, so it is only right that the second baby had two names as well. Yep. Out of nowhere, she said the name Rafaela. So now my full first name is Nina Rafaela. So, why is my name the next part of my testimony? We, had just a, we just had a series in church where we talked about the names of God which are very significant. But did you know that our names, the earthly names that we are given, are also significant? Because the meanings of our names are directly related to our destiny. And that's straight from mommy, she told me that. The Bible has evidence of this for many individuals, especially Jesus' name, meaning Savior and Emmanuel, God with us. I mean, if God calls every star in the universe by name, and this verse is found in Psalms, how much more important is your name, God's very own child? My mom spoke about Jehovah Rapha a few weeks ago, and the poster is on your right side. It's over there. Jehovah Rapha means God our healer. And this is where my second name, Raphaela, comes from. Raphaela means God has healed, and God indeed healed me from my heart defect. But the name itself was impromptu. Yeah, it was out of the blue. How could it be? It can only be God. But God was still revealing more because in March 2020, eight whole years after the surgery, during one of our pre regular prayer nights, Chloe received a revelation from God. Prior to this, we had found out the meanings of our names. The name Nina is of Spanish origin, and it means little girl. And my friends and family will attest that I do act like a little girl. <laughs> Chloe's revelation from the Lord was this. If you put both my first names together, Nina, Rafaela, the meaning of that name is God has healed a little girl. Like that, you can see. That meaning is so, so specific to what happened to me. And the fact that that name, not just one of them, but both of them, 
was not even prepared beforehand is even more amazing. I cannot conclude that this was simply a coincidence. In fact, God could have healed me at any age if he wanted to. But he healed me when I was quite literally a little girl. In fact, the cardiologist said, had we not found that the had we not found out about the hole at that age, I would be having heart problems by the time I turn 18. Well, I'm 22 right now, and as of my heart checkup in 2018, my heart is as healthy as it can be. What happened to me was supernatural, and it was divinely appointed by God himself. So how does all of this even relate to the fruit of the Spirit? Can I have Philippians 4 and 7 on the screen again, please? In the first part, it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Now, can I have John 14, 27 on the screen, please? It says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. So these verses, and in particular the ones, the parts that I said out loud, highlights a key aspect of not just God's peace, but all the fruit of the Spirit. And it is this. It is supernatural. Number one in Philippians, it surpasses all understanding. And number two in John 14, 27, it is not as the world gives, but what God gives. Amen. Actually, this was not the only instance where I experienced God's supernatural peace. And it was the one my mom talked about a few weeks ago. During the whole three, almost four weeks of my Athenico's health journey, I felt nothing but God's peace. In one of our prayer meetings for my Aten, the Holy Spirit through me coined this phrase, the weirdness of our peacefulness. And that is how I would describe God's peace. Supernatural, indescribable, and very weird in the earthly world standard. In both instances, I could not receive God's peace by my own effort. Believe me, I tried when I was reciting John 14, 27 and kept singing our God. The fruit of the Spirit is a product of the Holy Spirit's transformation in us. It is not by our own effort. It is not, I chose to be peaceful, or I chose to be gentle, or I, I chose to be humble. Because the fruit of the Spirit is not a command. It is a supernatural product that we, re that we receive through the Holy Spirit only. Can I have John, fi John 15 verse 5, please? It says this, I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And can I have the next picture, please? It's on the tree. Yeah. So I drew this tree, and it's how the Lord like allowed me to imagine it. So, yes. This is a picture that essentially the Lord gave me, which I drew, and it explains how Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, produces his fruit through us. Jesus is the vine. Nina, can you go to the left? Sorry. Jesus is the vine and which is rooted into the ground. We are the branches that come out from the vine. And the fruit of the Spirit produces through us. The branches that extend are us and the fruit of the Spirit grows from the branches. Again, as Jesus has said, we cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit without Him and abiding in Him as per John 15 verse 5. But how do we do that exactly? What exactly connects us the branches to Jesus? Us the branches to Jesus the vine. What is the part that we must play? Can we have K 
can, can I have Hebrews 11 verse 6, please? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith is what connects us to Jesus, and nothing else, and the only thing that will allow us to produce his fruit. Why? Because the fruit itself is supernatural. For something that is supernatural, you need faith. <laughs> there is no other way. Because it is something that you cannot see with your physical eyes. If you think about my instances, with my surgery, I kept repeating John 14, 27 in our God. And with all my heart, I believed them, albeit with very little faith at that time. God still moved. And the second instance with my utter health, I knew that she would be okay because in our prayer, we quite literally surrendered everything to God and told him, whether my Atta lives or dies, God is still good and we will continue to praise Him. Faith. How can we strengthen our connection to the vine? In other words, how can we increase our faith so that we can continue to produce His fruit? Can I have Romans 10 verse 17 please? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This whole process of producing the fruit of the Spirit quite literally starts and ends in Him. To have faith in the first place, it comes by hearing Him and His Word. Wow. And the fruit produces once we have established our faith in Him. Amen. That is why He says that He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Amen. That is why even before I was born, God had already planned out my destiny from beginning to how I got my name, to how he healed me in 2012. Of course, my destiny is still in its beginning, but that's for another time. Can I have the picture of the tree again? The fruit of the Spirit is the character of Jesus, produced by the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, in the follower of Christ, which is us. Of course, the fruit must be Jesus' character, obviously because he is the vine, the main body of the plant. The way in which the fruit will grow and produce, that mechanism is done by the Holy Spirit. Have you ever seen the branches alone produce fruit? You can see. I actually put this in later than the picture. You can see like... No, we can't see, yeah. You can see like the blue speckles coming out within. You can't see it on the outside because, yeah, because it's done inside. And if you think about a plant, like naturally, it called biologically and uh, cellularly, it is not the branches itself that produces the fruit, but it's all the cells working within wow. the plant. Amen. Within, it's the inside. That's the Holy Spirit. That's Amen. Him working Amen. within us to produce Amen. that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So externally, we are just the branches. But what is happening within the branches at a biological and cellular level, in other words, the inside, in other words, the transformation in the branches through the Holy Spirit, that is what produces the fruit. <clears throat> It is by the fruit of character that is manifested in our daily life that we give evidence of the reality of Christ within us. Amen. Again, transformation is fundamentally the Holy Spirit producing His fruit in us. In saying this, transform ministry is the ministry of the Holy Spirit and His ministry in us within our daily walk with Him. Amen. Amen. I'll end with this question. If you look at Galatians 5, 22 to 23, and if we can have all oh, words, wow, <laughs> you will notice that there are no multiple fruits. Amen. It says fruit. It doesn't Amen. say fruits. It's not plural. Amen. Why is the fruit of the Spirit without the S at the end? Why is it not plural? This is because there is only one fruit of the Spirit, 
and that is love. And Pastor John mentioned this, so I was kind of like, wow, when he was talking about love in his was it, communion. What is mentioned in Galatians 5, 22 to 23 are the eight characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit, and it is love. How can this be? So if we can have the last picture up, please. Can you go to the left? Please? I'll go to the left. Yes, I'll go to the left, Mummy. <laughs> well, according to Dwight L. Moody, love is found in terms of all of these other characters. And it is as following. Joy is love exalting. Peace is love reposing. Long suffering is love untiring. Gentleness is love enduring. Goodness is love in action. Faith is love on the battlefield. Meekness is love under discipline. And temperance is love in training. Amen. So that's that's all for me. So, church, I hope that you are blessed by this message. And again, it can only be God. Amen. Thank you, and God be the glory.